Hey yo, what is up guys, Akrish here, back with another video. Today we'll be taking a look at some gateway from Dragino. So we'll be uh, stepping our foot into LoRa van. Till date we were just looking at LoRa and point to point connections wherein one uh, LoRa module can connect to the other LoRa module. But we'll be connecting our LoRa modules to the internet using this gateway from Dragino. Today we'll be quickly setting up an Arduino node with a gateway. We'll be connecting both of these to the things network, which will be our server for the day. So if you're interested in this and learning how to set up your Dragino gateway to the things network and connect your Arduino nodes or any LoRa nodes to your gateway to send data over LoRa WAN, stay tuned to this video because it'll be right here. <laughs> PCB GoGo is the leading supplier of turnkey PCB assembly services including PCB manufacturing, PCB assembly, component sourcing, functional testing and IC programming. They have been in the PCB industry for over 10 years. They are equipped with the most advanced production equipment such as Yamaha pick and place, reflow oven, wave soldering, x-ray, AOI testing and the most professional technical staff. PCB GoGo provides the order service from prototype to mass production. Join them now from the link in the description box below. So this big box from Dragino has pretty much everything that will help us in getting started with LoRaWAN, the gateway, the Arduinos, the shields, the sensors, etc. But before moving on to this and digging into this box, first let's understand what the hardware is capable of, what LoRaWAN is, so that we can better appreciate the hardware. If you're already aware of LoRaWAN and how things work and directly want to look at the setup of the Dragino gateway, you can head over to this timestamp in the video. So as we all know that standalone LoRa is capable of transmission of signals uh, to over hundreds of kilometers. So it has the transmission range of hundreds of kilometers. That is why it is called as long range or LoRa. Uh, there are pretty much other applications and advantages of LoRa as well, along with setbacks as well. Uh, if you want to know more about LoRa, I've made a detailed video playlist about LoRa. You can check that out from here. But today we'll be talking about LoRa combined with WAN, which is Wide Area Network. What essentially Wide Area Network here means that we connect LoRa with the internet. So let's quickly look at a diagram of how this can be done. So connecting LoRa with the internet is possible using what we call a gateway. A gateway consists of a Wi-Fi or an internet chip which essentially brings an internet to this device and the gateway also has a LoRa chip built in. So the LoRa chip and the internet uh, chips are connected uh, together. So this gateway can give a functionality of both the LoRa wireless networking and the internet networking as well. So for example, you have a soil sensor over here, a rain sensor over here, a light sensor over here, and you have your smartphone over here. All these three sensors will have LoRa transmitters using which the values measured of the soil moisture or rain moisture or the light intensity can be sent through LoRa to any other device. So if you would have had only this LoRa gate chip over here in the gateway and not connected to the internet, we can, we can send this data over to any other LoRa chip as well using LoRa uh, wireless frequency, you may say. Now, once the gateway has all this information of all the LoRa beacons or the LoRa transmitters around it, so this information gets collected through LoRa gets transferred to the internet and from the internet it goes to a server. Now when you have internet connectivity on your smartphone you can retrieve that data on your smartphone and you can see all the values of the sensors on your smartphone. So this is how LoRaWAN works. This can be true the other way around as well wherein if we want to control some LoRa devices the remote control can be your smartphone. So your smartphone sends in some signal to the server. The server sends that signal to the uh, gateway using the internet. So this half of the sheet, if you can say, happens on the internet uh, thing and this half happens on the LoRa thing. So the data comes on to the gateway. The gateway uh, from the internet sends the data to the LoRa transmitter of the gateway. So the gateway has both the LoRa transmitter and the receiver or the transceiver that we can say. Now the gateway will transmit that information using LoRa throughout and 
all the receivers present in this range can read that value and can accordingly get control. So this is what in a nutshell the gateway does. It kind of connects two protocols. One is LoRa and the other is internet and we make use of LoRaWAN. So we get kind of best of both worlds, the speed and the connectivity of the internet and the low power and the long range of the LoRa technology. So I guess now we are good to go to unbox the Dragino kit for the LoRaWAN uh, protocol that we have got. So this is the box. It's a pretty big box on the back side. On the back side, it says LoRa IoT kit. It's the version two for the frequency 868. This is the frequency uh, which is standard in India and in the Europe. You might have to get other frequency uh, kits if you're living elsewhere. So let's quickly open this box. It's a magnetic box. Um, so the box has the gateway, the shields, LoRa shields, the Arduino and some Arduino accessories. We'll quickly get rid of this and there we go. We have the LoRa gateway. We'll take this out. It comes with a cover on its antenna side. We have got three antennas as well. We've got a, a LoRa shield which we'll take a look and we've got another one. Then I suppose we've got an adapter for the gateway. We'll keep that on the side. Removing this, we have at the bottom some accessories for the Arduino. I suppose we have a couple of Arduino cables. We have some jumper wires and we have some sensors, some LEDs. So it's a pretty good kit with some small accessories for the Arduino that you would like to play with. We'll not be playing with this right now. So I'll quickly keep this box to a side and we can quickly take a look at the main gateway. So this is the gateway. So at the back, it has its branding, some details. It has the frequency as 868. Uh, there are four rubber feet on the side. It has the power uh, adapter socket. Then there's a WAN port. Then there's a LAN port. There's nothing on the sides. On this side, we have a USB port. It's just a power USB port. It's nothing fancy. Then we have got an antenna connector. We've got this antenna. We'll quickly connect this through the SMA connector. There you go. That's the connection for this. Then you got to connect this power adapter over here and voila, your uh, gateway setup is uh, ready. Uh, so keeping this at a side, taking a closer look at the Arduino shields that we have. So these are clip on Arduino shields that go like this on top of the Arduino. It has the same number of pins as the Arduino. So there are a couple of shields that are present. One has the RFM 98 uh, LoRa module uh, with again an antenna connector. We'll be using this module for today's demo. Uh, we'll be taking a look at this particular shield in future as well. So this shield has a similar sort of LoRa module, a LoRa transmitter you may say. It has a small GPS module alongside with it. So we'll be using, we'll be making a LoRa based GPS tracker using this but in a later video. Do subscribe to our channel if you're interested in that video. So I'll keep one antenna to a side and I'll connect this antenna to this Arduino as well. So in our today's demo, obviously we have the gateway as this hardware that we have from Dragino. So we have a single channel Dragino gateway, which will be acting as this uh, over here. Then we have a, a beacon or a sensor that you can say as an Arduino over here. So these LoRa antennas are present over here which are this and this one. So we'll be sending a random number generated on the Arduino through this LoRa over from this antenna to this antenna, which essentially means this path over here. And then we'll be sending that random number generated from the Arduino to the Dragino onto the internet. Our server for the day will be the Things Network. So the Things Network is a LoRaWAN based open source network wherein you can connect your gateways. You can send your data from your nodes to your gateways. It's an awesome network. We'll be using that today and we'll be seeing the values on the server screen itself or on our laptop. So let's get started and set up the gateway and the Arduino so that we are able to set up a simple LoRaWAN link. Connect your gateway to the power of 12 volts, one ampere with the adapter given in the box. Then connect your LAN cable to the LAN port and the other side of the LAN port to your laptop or the computer used for the setup. Now head over to your web browser, type in the IP 10.130.1.1, enter the username as root and password as Dragino and then login. 
Now we need to connect our gateway to the internet using Wi-Fi. For that, head over to network and then wireless. Hit the scan button on the wireless radio zero option. Hit the join network button corresponding to your SSID or Wi-Fi name. Enter your Wi-Fi password in the WPA passphrase box mentioned, then enter any random new name of the gateway, then hit the submit button. On the next page, hit the save and apply button so that your gateway gets connected to your Wi-Fi network. Now you need to disable the Dragino SSID which essentially makes your gateway an access point. You need to disable this so that your gateway can connect to your Wi-Fi. Once you do that, you will see that your gateway gets connected to your network. Now head over to the console of the Things Network and hit the Gateways button. We need to register a new gateway. You need to select the Legacy Packet Forwarder option. Now head back over to the Dragino page. Under the Service option, we need to go to LoRaWAN Gateway. We need to copy the Gateway ID over here and paste it in the Gateway EUI on the Things Network console. You can give it a short description. We need to select the Frequency Plan as India. The router gets selected automatically as Asia. You need to select the correct location of where your gateway is placed so that it gets beautifully marked on the map. You need to select the antenna placement. For our case, it's an indoor gateway. So I select indoor and then we register. We see that the status of this gateway is shown as connected, which is a good sign. We can now move back to our gateway Dragino page, we need to set the radio power as 20. We need to select the frequency as mentioned on my screen and all the other settings will be there by default. Now we need to hit the save and apply button and that wraps up our gateway setup. Now moving on, we need to create an application for the Arduino. You can enter any random application ID, some random description that you want. The handler registration gets uh, TTN handler EU by default and then you can hit the add application button. This creates our application. Now to interpret the data that we'll be sending from the Arduino to the things network we need to write a small script. That script is present on my github page. You need to head over there, copy that payload script, head over back to the things network, go to the payload formats, paste the copied code over there and you should be good to go. You need to save this by hitting the save button at the bottom of the page. Now head back over to the GitHub page, open the Arduino sketch, copy that sketch and paste it on your Arduino IDE. Head back over to the Things Network console under the application you need to register a device. For each Arduino or node that you create, you need to register a device. You can enter any random device ID with a random device EUI if you want and then you need to hit the register button. This essentially creates a new device on the things network. The device by default gets created by an OTAA method. You need to switch this to the ABP method which creates three fields which we can see. We need to copy the network session key uh, onto our Arduino code. Similarly, we need to copy the app session key from the things network console to our Arduino code. And the third thing that we need to copy from the things network is the device address. We'll copy that and paste it uh, in our Arduino code as well. These are the three keys that need to be copied. Then connect your Arduino to the computer, select the correct COM port and hit the upload button. The status before uploading the code is never seen. Once the code gets uploaded, you need to open the serial monitor for the code and the status will change as soon as a message gets transmitted. We see that the status is now one second, two second. Now we open the data tab or in the things network console and on the left hand side, we open the serial monitor. We see that the Arduino sent 107 as random number, then 149 and that is the same thing or the result that we can see on the things network. If we click on the data, we see the random number that we get. We see the gateway details as well using which this message was received on the things network console. So this was a quick setup and demo of the Dragino gateway along with an Arduino node that Dragino provides us. I'll be making a future video with a LoRaWAN based GPS tracker. If you have any other ideas in mind as well, do let me know in, down in the comment section below. And this is it from my side for today. Thanks for watching. 
subscribe to our channel if you haven't till now also hit the bell icon to stay notified this is our first signing off